Carol. Survive the end days. Stay till the end of this video for immediate access to the full video of Survive the End Days. I'll also give you the opportunity to get a free ebook, Emergency Preparation, How to Take Care of Your Family When Disaster Strikes. So please stay till the end of the video. Thanks. Iran and Russia together are going into holding up and establishing Syria. Syria, of course, being on Israel's border. What we see, which is about to happen, I believe, with Syria, and it, it may have already happened by the time this show airs, the prediction is that Syria has fallen apart, quite literally, mm -hmm. but on a political basis, they would be, quote, partitioned, in that although Russia today has control of Syria, they would be partitioning it so that the eastern portion of Syria would effectively be considered disputed occupied territory by the Islamic State. I think the world is about to give legitimacy to the Islamic State, and the Islamic State would have control over eastern Syria and also over Iraq. I don't think that Russia wants to mess with them because what Russia wants is a statelet. They want to make sure that they can hold on to a couple of key cities. And the two cities that they want to hold on to is Aleppo and Damascus. Mm -hmm. And if they can control that eastern portion of the Mediterranean Sea so that they can have that port, that's what they're really interested in. And why is that? They are interested because of the potential offshore energy in the eastern Mediterranean. Now, let's just briefly talk. In the last 20 years, there's been a complete change for Israel. Israel found the largest natural gas That's finds right. in the last 20 years in the eastern Mediterranean. One site was called Tamar. The other was called Leviathan. Also reportedly in the Golan Heights, they found profound stores of shale oil in the Golan Heights. This is brand new for Israel. Totally rewrites what Israel had. The joke was always that God gave the oil mm -hmm. to the Arab nations and Israel didn't have any. Now we find out that Israel is sitting on a gold mine right. of natural gas and of oil. I believe that Putin, who is dominating in Syria, will be perfectly content with carving up Syria so that he can have a control base of operations in western Syria so he can control the port, his military access. But also, I believe that Putin and Iran have an alliance so that they can control not only the production of global oil, but the distribution of global oil. And I believe that they are positioning themselves so that someday they could invade Israel to be able to take over the vast stores of oil and natural gas that Israel is controlling with this very unique new partnership between Iran and Russia in Syria, with China supporting this. I think this lines up with scripture, but it also shows why an invading army would want to come into Israel, because yes. Vladimir Putin and the Ayatollahs want to control the world's source of oil, gas, and its distribution, which sets up again the reason why they would support a global world order to keep their game going into the future and to support them if they would invade against Israel, of which we know under the Iranian agreement, that's the first time the entire world has gone against Israel's interests. And that sounds like a foreshadowing of Gog and Magog, Ezekiel 38, 39. You said to me as you came in the studio, Michelle Bachman, that Barack Obama is pitching for global government. And I saw an article in Invis Investors Business Daily headline, Obama, King of the World, It's Quite Possible. We actually talked about this on air a couple of weeks ago with uh, John Haller. And Eric, you were with me at that time. And this article says over a year and a half ago that President Obama wasn't about to spend his post presidency building houses like Jimmy Carter, but there was a discernible sign that he would seek to become Secretary General of the United Nations. And this article goes on to explain how that is not only possible, but probable. King of the world, an Israeli newspaper had a 
cartoon recently, a couple weeks ago, called Barack Obama, King of the World. Michelle, we're going to have to pick this up in our next program, but I want you to comment on what I've just said, because you came in, as I said, into the studio, and you said Barack Obama is pitching for global government. Well, and it isn't just me. This was Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who, who reportedly committed to preventing it from happening. He was urging moderate Arab states to oppose it, reportedly asking in private, quote, wasn't eight years of having Obama right. in office enough during which he ignored Israel, and now he wants to be in a position that is liable to cause us hardships in the international arena. If Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to bring together a coalition to stop Obama from coming into this position, I think it's very clear that we need to take this seriously because as Secretary General Obama, as was reported in the Investor's Business Daily in an article by Thomas McArdle, he's wrote that Obama would actively seek to place the United States under under UN authority. He would not go in under the failed UN that we've had before, the weak UN. Obama would only go in to an empowered, powerful UN, powerful enough to see the United States come under the UN's authority. Yes, this article goes on to say he would redefine the office and expand its powers simply by his visibility. This is if Barack Obama were to become Secretary General of the UN. And he would ceaselessly agitate within America for change in the authority of the United Nations over the lives, sovereignty, and tax dollars of all Americans. And it concludes for the mostly undemocratic powers represented in the UN. Having a former U.S. president who serves their interests as, for all intents and purposes, king of the world would be a dream come true. Eric, your thoughts, then we're going to have to wind down this program. We will continue it next weekend. You know, I hope we get a chance to come back next weekend and visit the prophetic implications of what's going on with Russia and what's happening in Israel and those things. I think that's very, very important. We didn't spend enough time there. We'll come back. But the whole idea of Obama being able to extend his presidency, basically, even in, and enhance it and expand it, I don't think I need to say what I'm thinking because I think a lot of the listeners are thinking the same thing we all are too and as you shake your head you wonder what's coming next well we do know that god has everything under control and michelle i think you would emphasize that as well because that is a message that you like to bring wherever you go is that none of this catches god by surprise no in fact it's foretold and if we absolutely were, if we were smart enough with our bible we would know that just as we look at the early church in acts 1 and acts 2 jesus spent his 40 days after his resurrection teaching the disciples about the kingdom of god then upon his ascension the disciples went back to jerusalem and spent 10 days in prayer when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and the power to be witnesses for Jesus Christ across the earth. We know that there is more prophecy of Jesus' second coming even than there was in the first. And yet the people who literally crucified Christ, who were present in the room on the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up and gave the first witness for Jesus Christ to to the Jews and to the Gentiles in Jerusalem, that power from the Holy Spirit witnessed of Jesus Christ to those individuals and over 3,000 came into the Lord that day, and the witnessing continued. We also should be encouraged and empowered as believers in Jesus Christ, now more than ever, with the Bible in one hand, the newspaper in another, to say to our neighbors and our co-workers and people at church, this is about the Lord speaking to the world, that I am coming soon. Let me tell you how you come to Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That is newness of life, and that Mm -hmm. is our future. Click on the top link below this video to get more information. You can get your free ebook, Emergency Preparation, How to Take Care of Your Family When Disaster Strikes, and instant access to the full video of Survive the End Days. Or go to survive.gr8.com. Thank you.